Hey guys, this is a little bit of a different video. Although I know y'all have been in my bathroom before because didn't we do a dyeing my hair thing? <laughs> um, I just thought I'd share some information. I wish somebody had told me. <laughs> so um, over on the channel, channel Intervals of Sanity, I know my girlfriends and I have had discussions about menopause and the fun, not so fun side effects. Um, it's kind of a funny conversation. If I can find the link to the broadcast, I'll link it in the description below. But anyway, one of the things I've discovered is um, my already sensitive skin that I've had since birth, since I can remember, is so much more sensitive now. Um, and it was oily most of my life until I hit menopause, and now it's just dry as a bone. So I periodically get itchiness and redness um, you can see a little bit of it right here I got itchy this morning before I took a shower which you can see I just did because my hair is wet um, I get and you can see a little bit of scarring or spots still it's mostly gone um, where I get like re itchy rashes here they start out looking like pimples like this one that's trying to come but it's now going away um, and um, then they get red and they get itchy and then they turn into sort of a psoriasis scab and um, what I would think of as traditional treatments for them don't work um, you would think about putting some pimple cream on it or something like that to dry it out doesn't work I need to super moisturize that's what makes it go away so I'm gonna go through my skincare routine and I'm gonna actually show you what makeup I'm using now that works on my 56 year old skin that doesn't make me look uh, ridiculous um, I don't use too many powders anymore because they just stick in all the wrinkles and the creepy skin and make it you look worse than yeah um, so to start off of course clean skin so I only use two kinds of cleanser um, because I found these either one of these I can use and they both don't make me break out or make me itchy so Cetaphil um, any of the Cetaphil's actually are fine um, this I have the daily facial cleanser this one works really well this is this lives in the shower my husband uses it too um, the um, sensitive skin one works really great but this one's not bad either um, the other only other one I found that doesn't make me itchy and cause me issues is Mary Kay time wise repair volume firm foaming cleanser it's a like <laughs> it's a mouthful no, this is a video, by the way, I'm going to start out. It's not sponsored. Nobody sent me anything. I bought all these products. I will link them in the description below. Um, my cousin is a Mary Kay consultant. Um, fun fact. So um, I do get these from her. I will link her uh, links in the description below to her consultant site. Um, but I'm not getting any money for that. I buy these from her. She ships them to Oregon. Um, and I get the whole time wise time wise. Um, repair line of products none of them make my super sensitive skin break out fun fact okay so I've already cleaned my skin you can tell my hair is wet so the next thing I do is check my face for that fun menopausal facial hair because yeah you know, the fun heavy-duty chin hairs and the mustache hairs I can't wax anymore because when I do I break out in hives all around my face and then they're there for 24 hours it's not just like an hour thing it's there for like 24 hours and so I just it's not worth it so I use a flawless um, little shaver again I'll link the products below um, this works really great um, I do have to do it like every day or every other day but it's better than nothing I don't want to be you know mountain mad woman with lots of black facial hair my mustache would be thicker than my husband's so let's not go there <laughs> I also of course use tweezers now I do find as I'm getting older I'm having less issue with having to keep my brows tweezed than having to tweeze around my mouth and chin so when I was younger I, I could have had a unibrow so easy I had Brooke Shield eyebrows like super thick um, and I had to tweeze every day um, as I'm getting older, uh, less eyebrow hair, but more mustache hair and chin hair. So, you know, so the first thing we're going to do is look in the magnifying mirror because that's the other thing is I can't see what I'm doing. Any super thick chin hairs, 
over mustache hairs, I tweeze. Everything else, I just shave. I do have curly eyebrow hair, so I do, and they grow really long, <laughs> so I do sometimes tw trim them with a pair of scissors and an eyebrow brush. I comb them straight up, and then any really super long ones, I just trim them off. Um, I call them my Einstein eyebrows. Thanks, Dad. It's the same reason I have these. <laughs> okay, so once that's done, then we're going to start the moisturizing process because what I found, like I said, is that the best treatment for my sensitive skin and these psoriasis type itchy rashes that I get is moisture. So I need to moisture more than I think I do. Um, so the first thing I start off with is a mixture of jojoba oil and vitamin E oil that I mix myself. I'll um, link the two oils I buy in the description below. I have mostly have this issue on my chin and jawline. So I put the oil on my cheeks and then I rub it in. To the chin and jawline. If I have an active rash, I found that to heal it a little quicker besides the vitamin E oil, a Breva cold sore um, blister treatment actually works really well. They're not cold sores. I do get cold sores, which is why we have this in the house, and my husband does too. Um, but this is just a healing ointment, and for whatever reason, I found that it works to speed up the healing process on all of the rashes. So I'll put a little, a little bit goes a long way. That's probably way too much, and it's expensive. It's not super cheap, but I'll put it anywhere. I think I might be having an issue. Okay. Then I will use one of my balms. So I have um, healing balms and, well, they're herbal balms and they help with the redness and the itch. The Abriva doesn't, it just helps with the healing and the oils help moisturize the skin. Um, I have two different balms I use. Uh, on depending on any given day and how actually how itchy things are if things are really really itchy I will use this um, soothing dandelion salve that's from an Etsy seller again I'll link all the uh, everything in the description below she sells these little tiny ones they're a dollar fifty plus shipping so you can get a little one and try it um, if it's not actively red and itchy then I use this one this one I got on a trip to Alaska and um, I just ordered some more because I'm actually running out. Um, and they have another one that I'm going to try that I found out about on their website that might work for arthritis pain for my knee. Um, it's an herbal, he herbal healing balm with Devil's Club. It's from Back Bay Botanicals. Works really well. It's a, a waxy balm. So I'm going to just put a little bit of that. Again... I mostly get these rashes along my jawline, so that's where I put this. And it's very, it's got a lot of moisture in it. You can see, see how oily my hands got? Okay, then I break out the Mary Kay Time Wise Day Cream, which is running low here. Let's see. I think, my, I think this one's almost empty. My hands are too greasy to get the top off. Okay, hang on. Okay, I am one of these people, whether it's skincare or art supplies, that will take the product packaging apart, even when I think it's empty, to get that last little bit out. Because, you know, shit's expensive. Okay, so... I'm gonna grab some of that and rub that in. Now at night, I will do all of the same things I just did, but I will use the night cream. And I put on a little bit of the lifting serum 
and some eye cream at night. In the day, I will put on a tiny bit of the night cream. It's thicker. Remember what I said about lots of moisture? And I'll put it all along the jawline. Okay, then for daytime, I have the Mary Kay, what is this called? I call it the Miracle Blue Eye Gel, but that's not the name of it. Soothing Eye Gel. Um, I have a couple of different eye gels. I have this one, and then I have this other one that my friend Carla McCants sent me um, by Dr. Brandt, Needles No More, No More Baggage Eye Cream. They both work equally well. My only issue with this one is it's tinted, and it's tinted sort of an orangey color. So if I'm not wearing foundation, which I don't generally, um, which we'll get into in the makeup part of this, um, then I don't wear that one because um, it does, no matter how much you rub it in and thin it out, it does leave a little bit of color. So I use this one. It looks blue, but it goes on clear. Pack that in and let it dry. Now you can, um, if I'm going to an event, I'll do that, let it dry, and I'll do it one or two more times and let it dry. I do have heavy under eye bags. Um, it's genetic, there's nothing I can do about it. My dad's got them. If I can find a picture, I'll insert it here somewhere. Um, his dad had them. Um, the only way to get rid of them completely, plastic surgery. So um, losing weight won't hurt, which I'm working on, but you know, they've always been there, so. All right, so we're gonna let all of that shiny slick, slickness dry down and we'll get to the makeup portion in just a minute. Okay, things are still a bit shiny, but it is dry-ish. So I do start with putting on a um, eye primer, generally when I'm wearing makeup. I just find that no matter what eye makeup I'm putting on, even though I don't put a lot on, it helps it stay longer and <sighs> My makeup dripping off in the midst of a hot flash is less of an issue. There's a hair in my face. Um, and all of you women out there who are menopausal know exactly what I mean. Um, so I've been using the Instant Age Rewind Primer from Maybelline for a while. I'm not sure they make it anymore. They might, but um, again, I'm going to put a list of products in the description and links if I can find them. So I'll put a little bit of that on first on the eyelids. While that's drying, we're gonna corral the brows. <laughs> so this is by Almay, it's a brow styler. It's a clear brow gel. Um, I love the invention of these brow gels, it's wonderful. And I will, let's see, where's my face? Oh, there I am. So I will comb them up and then grab some more. I have eye, eyebrows like Einstein, so there's not, you can't put too much of this stuff on. Let's turn you just a little bit. Okay. And then we're gonna do this one. It's eyebrow hair it's just that it wants to grow every which way so most days even when I don't have makeup on I usually have eyebrow gel on yeah that's pretty good so they're corralled and they're not gonna go anywhere <laughs> all right then I don't generally wear foundation um, if my skin is looking decent. I don't, definitely don't. And having hot flashes and stuff, just the less, I wanna add a little bit of color and brightness to my face, but I don't wanna have tons of makeup on. And the older we get, the more sort of 
facey fuzz we get and the foundation just sticks in the hair and it just doesn't look attractive. Uh, not in real life. Uh, it's one thing on camera and on film, it looks okay, but in real life up close, it looks like crap. So I just generally don't even bother. Um, when I do, I use Mary Kay has a tinted moisturizer. Hang on. When I do wear foundation, I, I have two Mary Kay foundations, both which work well for me. Um, the, and one isn't really a foundation, it's their tinted moisturizer with SPF 20. Um, and this is the color Ivory 2. And it's very light, thin, um, and when I want to during the day, put a little bit of color on my face. I feel like I need a little bit of something. I'll put this. If I think I'm going to get sweaty and gross and I want something a little heavier, they have a CC cream, sunscreen, broad spectrum, SPF 15, tinted cream, and um, this is light to medium. And both of these work. Um, again, though, I generally don't bother, but I do have these if I need them. Um, the next thing I found is just eliminating as many powders from my beauty routine as possible it really looks better and um, lasts longer for me. So I have a couple of um, cheek sticks. This is a Clinique uh, chubby stick, cheek color and color for plumped up peony. I also have one from Bite. Oh, here it is. I also have one from Bite Cosmetics. Uh, this is or bite beauty. This is macaroon. They're about the same color uh, This one's a little bit lighter the bite one. Um, I Haven't used too much yet. I do like it. I, I use this one more They both work decently well. They look kind of bright going on so I just It's like that silly clown face and you can use your fingers, you can use a brush before it dries. Need a little more on one side. Sometimes I'll just use a brush, I mean my hands. Just add a little color to the cheeks. Okay, then I will take, all this is why the eyes are drying. This is a Revlon um, balm stain lip. I don't like to wear anything that's gonna rub off quickly. I like to wear stains, lip stains, so that they stay. I can have them on there all day. They don't go anywhere. I don't have to think about it, right? So this is a, like a tinted, almost like a tinted chapstick, right? But it is pretty dark, so you don't need a lot. Just a little bit. Okay. I have lots of lipsticks and things, but I wear the stain a lot. I even have a Jeffree Star lipstick, but you know. All right, so next is eye makeup. So usually I just use, um, This is by L'Oreal Infallible Never Fail Eyeliner and it's a dark brown. And I honestly, I just put this on and smudge it with my fingertip generally and sometimes that's all I wear. I did yesterday get a bunch of Ulta. Um, they have these cream eyeshadows and these sticks. So we're gonna try one of those today. Um, I have Cup of Joe, which is dark brown. Um, Rule of Plum, a dark purple. Um, Taupe of the World. The color of the cap matches the eyeshadow. And then Naked Truth. We're going to go in with the dark purple. And in the outer corner. And then along the eyeline, eyelash line. We're going to go in before it dries and move it around, smudge it, blend it a bit. Let's see if I can get you a better angle here. That might be better. Okay, so.
I did find from doing the samples of this in the store yesterday that once it's on, it's on. It's not really going anywhere. It's going on very lightly, so I'm going to add some more. I want it a little darker. Putting it in the outer corners will make your eyes look a little wider set apart. I should preface this by saying I'm no beauty, beauty guru. I'm no expert. I only know what I do on my face. I'm going to put a little bit underneath. That looks pretty good. Oops, what do you think? All right, I'm gonna take one of these other colors, the lighter colors, and I'm gonna just put a little bit right there. So we're just adding a little color to my otherwise pale and pasty face. That's pretty good. All right, I'll put everything back in the drawer. Okay, now the next thing I do before I put on mascara, which I will do because my eyelashes are turning gray, <laughs> um, is I'll put on a setting spray just to help keep things in place. Now, mostly that was in the past for my eyeshadow, because um, I, I do have and use occasionally powdered eyeshadows. So this step is really important when I have powdered eyeshadow. With this new cream one, I don't know if I need to do this or not, but we're going to anyway. So, But I do it before mascara so that I don't do this and then get black mascara streaks all over my face that I then have to clean up because that's a thing. So this is Urban Decay's Chill Makeup Setting Spray. I just close my eyes. Spray and let that dry. And then we have, as our last step, Maybelline's Rocket Volume Express Mascara in black. And I don't always curl my lashes, but we're going to today. Because I am going to be doing, trying to do some filming today, which is why I'm doing all this. And in case my face is on camera, you're probably all tired of looking at my pale, pasty, eye-bagged face. So, you know, we'll put a little color. All right, so we're going to curl. If I'm... You know, not filming or having my picture taken. I don't always worry about curling my eyelashes. I'll just put the mascara on straight. Um, it just depends on my mood, to be honest. I have found that post-menopause, with the changes in my skin, I need to use more cream products and less powder for an attractive result. The powders just stick in every crass, crass, every crack and crevice. Um, as we get older, or as I'm getting older, the skin around my eyes is getting sort of crepey. And all you women out there who are my age know exactly what I mean. I know you do. And the powders just emphasize the crepey skin. Too much foundation um, just makes my face look like it's covered in fur, which it is, but we don't need the world to know that. I 
I also found that as I'm getting older, I don't want to be one of those older women that has like two tons of makeup on. I want to sometimes have a little bit. A little bit will go a long way. That doesn't mean, mean I have to have tons and be crazy about it. I do often start to have a hot flash in the midst of putting on my makeup, which I'm having right now, which just makes the whole process fun, right? So look up in the mirror. Catch any spots I missed. Grab a Q-tip to clean up any messes I made. That's it. What do you think? That's my skincare and makeup routine. Uh, what's yours? I'd love to know if you have any hints or tips for finicky, menopausal, sensitive skin. <laughs> I'd love to hear them. This is what I found that works for me out of much trial and error, especially over the last year. Um, I've had um, a lot of problems. I keep blinking. Same here. I've had a lot of problems with the rashes and things over the last year. Um, some of it's stress, in, stress induced. Um, it definitely hasn't been fun, but it's been a lot of trial and error for at least a year, if not longer, figuring out what exactly will work on my skin. And this, this routine seems to be working. So if you have any hints or tips though, I'd sure like to know. I'll leave links to the products in the description below and I hope this helps somebody. It's just a little something different. I'm no beauty guru or beauty expert. And by the way, off camera, I didn't do much to my hair. I do uh, find that, um, thank you to menopause, I am having some hair loss and thinning. I think I've mentioned this on camera before. So I am using Nioxin 2 shampoo and conditioner and scalp treatment, which is this stuff. It is helping. Uh, retard the hair loss. I don't know that I'm getting a lot of hair growth back, but it's not falling out anymore. Bonus points. Um, like my skin, my hair is dry. It used to be very oily when I was younger. So in addition to not blow drying my hair or curling it any more than I absolutely have to, every single day I use Brazilian blowout products. I use the dry oil on my hair and then I use the soothing serum. Um, they're very moisturizing. They're intended for people who blow dry their hair a lot to get it to look less frizzy. And I just find that they work really well for keeping the moisture in my hair. And then every now and then I do do some kind of hair, hair mask where I put a lot of um, conditioner. I think the one I have is L'Oreal. Let's see, hang on. It's from Dollar Tree. Oh, Garnier. Sorry. Garnier Whole Blend Single Use Rinse Out Care Cream. Um, I'll put this in my hair, put it up in a shower cap, and leave it on for like 15 minutes. It's usually on a day where I'm so lucky my husband hasn't taken my picture and posted it on the internet. Because it's usually on a day where I have also a moisturizing face mask on and usually the little patches under my eyes. And I'll just do everything at once and leave it on for 15 or 20 minutes and then go take a shower. I just look like a, you know, <laughs> a scary monster. I don't know. It's a pretty funny sight. Anyway, I do that too, and that helps keep my hair moisturized and, um, you know, looking less frizzy. Um, and this, it's still wet. All I did was put the products in and then just scrunch them in like this, and then that's it. That's all I did. So anyway, uh, if you have any tips or hints, I would sure love to hear them, and let's share, and let's not be afraid to talk about the side effects of menopause. I think it's a good conversation to have. Um, and it's something I think the younger women out there need to know, especially ones that aren't getting information from the women in their lives. I think it's a good thing. All right, that's it for today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you're near, new here, welcome. I usually do art videos. This is a little different for me. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them down below. All the information, including places you can find my social media links and my Etsy store and all of that stuff are in the video description. There's a link uh, that starts Linktree and then my name. If you click on that, um, that's gonna take you to a list of links where you can find me and follow me on social media and find my Etsy shop and all that stuff. Happy mail addresses down there. 
all that jazz. So check out the video description. Don't forget to go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. I'll see you later. Bye guys. Thank you.